Hello guys, welcome to Dance House Online Lectures. And today our lecture is going to be on exons and introns. And there are a few objectives that we need to be able to uh, meet at the end of this lecture. The first one is, is it the exons or the introns which has more percentage in our genome, in our total genome? And the second thing is, which one is more variable? Do we have um, um, introns in like number or do we have exons in like number? And in the individuals, if you compare individual one and two, they are DNA sequences. The difference is, does it lies in the exons or does it lies in the introns? We shall answer that question as well. And the third one is, what is the role of natural selection on this exon and intron as well? That is our final question to answer for you in this lecture. So let's start. We assume that this is our double-stranded DNA molecule. In every DNA molecule, we have both exons and introns together. So we are going to represent the shaded portions as exons and then the non-shaded portions as introns. This is the basic structure of our DNA. Introns and exons are together and then later in some process during the gene expressions we will later understand that all these introns are removed from our exons and then the exons will join together the process that we call splicing process but we cover that one in our next lecture so now to begin with our objectives here we see that we have only three exons that is not the actual number that is not the actual number this is just an example so we have almost four introns so in reality the number of exons and introns that we have in our genome they are different we have more introns in our genome than exons and if you compare two individual dna sequences let's say this is individual a and this is individual b the same dna um, we are going to have let's say Okay, so now let's look at what's happened here. This is individual A and individual B. If you compare their DNA structures, what the differences that you are going to see is going to be like this. You are going to have the same exons, the same proteins, because we all have the same proteins. It's just the way that they are expressed becomes different, but the same protein is present in all human. So the, this exon region is not going to be variable. So we, these, these are the exons here, but let's look at the intron regions. Here we see that this intron region here, you can see the length of this intron region in individual A and individual B is quite different, okay? And you can see the second intron region as well. And this is the pattern in, in all individuals. The length of the introns becomes different from one individual to the other. And that is why every individual is unique. I am different from you and you are different from me. It's mainly because of these introns, the introns of our DNA. So to our correction, it is the introns that are more variable from one person to the other. It is the introns that makes our DNA sequences to become different. And that is why these introns are very useful in our molecular techniques to detect certain things like the paternal pathway. Are you really from your mother? Are you really from your father? That is why we use these things to, um, um, to observe because these introns are different from one individual to the other. But there is a, there is a probability that the parents and their offspring share some percentage of similarity in these intron regions. So the third one is the role of natural selection on introns and exons. Natural selection, we know it is the differences in reproductive success and survival. What makes an individual to be more successful is if it can live long and reproduce more offspring. This is what we call natural selection. So this natural selection, if it occur, 
if this natural selection with regards to the exons, if there is a mutation that occur in this region, exon region, remember we have what we call codons. And these codons, this codon is a three uh, base nucleotide. For example, AAT is one single codon. TTA is another codon. TAT is another codon. Now, each of these codons, they all code for an amino acid. Let's say this one will code for lysine. This one will code for um, this is lysine, trypsin, okay, etc. Okay, so each of these code for an amino acid. So let's say if there is a mutation, that is, if there is a changes in the nucleotide in this exon region, and assuming that the amino acid or the, the codon for this particular gene region here is A, 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 A. And let's say this is the gene that will, um, this is the gene for behavior. This is a gene that is going to make you to behave like you are behaving in certain behaviors, I mean. So if there is a mutation, that is, if there is a change in any of these nucleotides here, the role of natural selection is going to be, there is going to be no amino acid production. Or if an amino acid is going to be produced, then it might be a modified form of an amino acid. And this might either lead to an advancement of this organism or it might suppress the organism. So if the mutation becomes positive, it is going to be a positive natural selection. If it becomes negative, it is going to become a negative natural selection. So natural selection has a role to play on introns since they are coding for an amino acid as a result of these codon three bases. For the introns, since they don't code for any amino acid, it is not important. Natural selection has no importance in these introns because their presence or absence does not affect an organism's complexity. So this is the role of natural selection on introns and exons. So I hope the video is clear. Please, any question or doubt that you might have regarding this lecture, feel free to send a comment or your question under my you know, um, channel. I shall get back to you. Enjoy the video.